Time for main event action here at Anaheim, the 125 championship feature. Interesting sidebar. We've got some international riders who have come here to take part this evening. A couple, three of them have made the main event. They'll be hard-pressed, I think, to keep up with the best of the Americans who are battling for championship points here. Yeah, I don't think that's their objective, Dave. They have learned in the past that uh, by competing with the Americans in Supercross, that it betters their skills. They come here, they go home a better rider. Time for the drop of the gate and the charge to turn number one. A tough track to pass on. The whole shot is critical. Let's see who's going to get to the first turn first. They traffic jam through and bursting from the pack is number 69, Jimmy Gaddis. He got a great start and look how that translates into a gap on the racetrack. Gaddis coming off a victory last week. Once you get the big mo, momentum on your side. Really, things really go your way. Now, last week was a combined East and West 125cc regional championship event. This week, it's just the Western Riders. So Gaddis only has to put up with half of the good guys that he did one week ago. He's out front making hay while the proverbial sun shines. Meanwhile, back in the back, the guy that figures to challenge him, number 31, Phil Lawrence, is caught up in traffic. And he's still got that price tag off those goggles <laughs> that we saw last week. Now, you said that was a trend among the younger riders. I can't help but note that Phil's the only guy out there who has the price tag. <laughs> I guess it's safe to assume he's not much of a trendsetter, is he? <laughs> All right, you want to keep your eye out here for Damon Huffman, number 86. You get glimpses of him. He's up into early contention. There is Damon currently running in third spot as factory Phil Lawrence makes the big charge on the number 31. But Gaddis got away quickly and is opening up a nice separation on second place. Lawrence moves cleanly into third, and that's going to drop number 180, Scott Myers, into the battle of his life here for fourth, fifth, and sixth. We'll take a look at it. The challengers moving up are number 88, most notably. That's Tommy Clowers, half out of control, but making steady progress toward the front. And he's joined by number 141, Craig Decker. Well, Decker and Clowers have uh, something in common. They're working their way toward the front of the pack. Uh, Myers, on the other hand, rider number 180, working his way toward the rear of the pack. That's not where you want to be throughout this whole thing. The rider we need to look for, though, as you pointed out a moment ago, Damon Huffman, rider number 86 out of Canyon Country, California. Rides for American Suzuki, and right now he's putting that Suzuki into the number one spot. Found a good line underneath Jimmy Gaddis. I'm not sure Gaddis even knew he was there. Now Gaddis knows he's there. He's trying to storm back. And look how he retaliated. Uh, looked pretty effective, but Hoffman, at the age of 16, gets the lead with the sneak attack. Imagine how he's going to feel if he can hang on and win this race in front of 55,000 people, all from right around his hometown of Canyon Country, California. Gaddis, meanwhile, gives up the ghost, or is it the fact that Phil Lawrence is coming so hard? I think Gaddis made one mistake, and I think he's worrying about that mistake, and uh, it allowed him to go on and make another one. Uh, Gaddis was favored coming into this race, and things are not working out his way. Again, it's that learning experience, the learning curve that you get in the 125cc Fist in the air for Damon Hoffman, who wins his first Supercross victory. Phil Lawrence closing to second, but the big news is the youngster, and you'll meet him in a moment. Damon Hoffman of the American Suzuki team leads the sweep. The celebration is on for the kid. All the fans are on their feet cheering for a new star of the future in Supercross competition. And here he comes, headed for victory lane, where he'll meet Bob Hanna. Take a look at the results. It's Lawrence, Gaddis, Clowers, and Decker rounding out the top five in the standings. Back through ten. Goodman, Pichon, Gonzalez, Crum, and Smale. Let's meet the new hero. Damon, your first Supercross win ever. How do you feel? Oh, it's great. You know, with backed by Team Suzuki, you know, they gave me all the support in the world, and they couldn't have done better work with my mechanic, Mark Johnson, and I'd like to thank my dad especially. You know, it's been hard for him for him for not being my mechanic, but um, I'm sure he's happy. Uh, when you get a lead like that, do you start thinking of uh, problems that you could have and the bike may break, may make a mistake? I try not to, but you know, you still think of those things and I just concentrated my hardest and oh man, it's great. Well, you look good. Good luck next week. Thanks a lot, Bob. Welcome to Big League, Damon Hoffman of Canyon Country, California. Let's hear from the runner-up, Bill Lawrence. Yeah, I got a pretty good start. Um, it wasn't that bad, so uh, I just got to buy a few by a few riders, and it took me a while to get Gaddis, but after I got him, Damon was pretty far up front. And I started uh, to slow it down a little bit, just to play safe, because I want the championship more than each individual race. But that's not the way to win a championship. I should have charged the whole way, and I didn't. And Damon rode a good race. He won. 
Take a look at the series standings. Gad is still on top by a point over Lawrence. Hoffman moves up to third with the first victory of his career at the age of 16. He is not allowed to drink champagne. That is not a big problem. He knows exactly what to do with this stuff. We'll be back with the 250 main event.